Hey everybody. Um, okay, so next thing I want to do is take our network trainer class and add some noise to it. Um, if you recall before when we were looking at character recognition, um, sometimes we want to actually make the network more robust by giving it some dirty uh, input and expect the same output, right? Because I don't necessarily have clean perfect input if I'm trying to recognize a handwritten character, for example. Um, I'm going to make one little tweak first uh, in the network trainer class. The protected virtual bools before and after train data point. I'm going to go ahead and add one more parameter in here, which is int capital I index. And this um, I actually won't use in this video, but I think I'm going to want in the future. And if you open up underscore train epic action, when we call this, I would actually like to pass in IDX of, where is it, of I, okay? Uh, just because uh, it could be the case that if I know the order um, that I have data points in my data set, based on each one individually in my subclass, I might want to handle them in a, in a special way. Um, in this case, it's not going to matter. I'm just going to add noise across the board. Um, but that's okay. Okay, so let's start our binary noise trainer. So public class uh, binary, sorry, noise trainer inherits from network trainer. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to need a new constructor. So public binary noise trainer inherits from base uh, sorry I need parameters public binary noise trainer with parameters back propagation network BPN and data set uh, DS inherits from base BPN DS Okay, just like that. Um, this usually goes over here. And I just want to line everything up. Okay, so additional initialization stuff here. Okay, if we have anything extra to do. All right. Um, what are we going to need? We're going to need, well, some new data. Okay, so private data. So let's do a private double underscore noise underscore density. Okay. And that's going to be equal to 0 0.10. So this will default to 10%. Uh, what noise density is going to be is um, the percentage of the time for which we're going to look at a bit, assuming this is binary noise here, uh, and flip it for the opposite bit. Okay, So with a noise density of 0 0.10, about 10% of the time, we're going to take the bit and flip it. Does that sound good? All right. Now I'm going to need a public double noise density with no preceding underscore and it will have a get method which returns sorry this is a curly brace return underscore noise density like that and a set method which sets underscore noise density equal to math dot min of one and math dot max of zero and value. Okay. Just like that. And the reason I'm doing this is forcing them. So if the user enters, you know, 10 for the noise density, that doesn't make any sense, right? This is only between zero and one. So this will actually bound it between zero and one. So that ensures that we have at least somewhat meaningful data. Um, so I guess now are our overrides, okay? So first of all, 
Let's overrides are protected. Oops. Protected override bool before train data point. Okay, this guy. Whoa. Um, and what I want to do here, I don't need to ignore, I don't read anything about the base. Let's just return true right now. Um, what I want to do is add some noise to the input data. Okay. Getting a little shift happy. So we're going to need a random number generator. So random rnd equals new random, just like that. Um, and let's add noise to the input. Now, you could, if you had something more procedural, um, be altering the output data. But for simplicity's sake, all I'm going to do is dirty up the input data and expect the same output. Okay, That's going to be my way of adding simple binary noise to this uh, input data. Okay, so for int i equals zero, i is less than input dot length i plus plus. Um, if rnd dot next double ah, parentheses is less than underscore noise density then I am going to take input of i and set it equal to, well, it depends. If input of i equals 0, then I want to switch it to 1. Otherwise, I'm going to switch it to 0. OK, just like that. So what this will do is it will go through each input bit, and if it's uh, you know, one, so if the next double, which is bounded between zero and one, is less than noise density, so this will be true about noise density percentage of the time, so 10% of the time by default, then take the input and set it equal to, if it's zero, set it to one, otherwise set it to zero, so that will just flip the bit, okay? And that'll be sort of straightforward. Now, another thing I want to do, just for my own personal purposes, is I want to I want to look at some of this noisy data and see see what I'm actually training my network on. You know, assuming it converges, I want to look at some of it. Um, so let's go actually down here in our private data and add another item. So let's add a public. I'll just make it public for ease of access. Public data set. Let's call it noisy data. Okay. And when does this need to get reset? Well, before I train an epic. Um, I'm going to reset it. And what I want this to do is I'm just going to set this data set to be the last actual data set that I trained over, which will include the noise. Okay. So before train data point happens there, which adds the noise. But before that, protected override bool before train epic. I don't know why I'm getting this weird indentation. Um, return true. Let's reset the noisy data. Okay, so noisy data equals new data set. All right, every time. So this way, uh, every time before the epic is trained, this gets reset to a brand new data set. And in here, as I'm training the data point, um, I'm going to go ahead and add it. Right, so add this quote dirty data point to um, the data set. Okay, so data point, I need to create a data point out of this input output pair that I have. Data point DP equals new data point. Um, and I can give it just these arrays, right? So I just adjusted input. So I'll give it input and output. And then I'm going to add this to noisy data. So noisy data dot data dot add 
data point DP, just like that. Okay, so that will toss them in here. Now, one of the unfortunate things, if you remember, is this will be, why do I have curly brace? Oh, that's why. I think that's why my indentation is weird. Um, make sure you fix that. So one of the things that's uh, sort of unfortunate is that when I add these, when I'm training data points, I have that index here in network trainer, train epic action. Recall that I put them in in the order given by IDX of I. So this is permuted, um, but we'll actually be able to compare the output, expected output value to the actual input and know which data point we're training on. Okay. So let me build this real quick, make sure it works. All right. So let's go back to our program. And the network trainer here is going to get replaced by a binary noise trainer equals new, oops, <laughs> binary noise trainer. Okay. Build still works. Um, So this is, let's see, our iterations are set to a million, the error is set to one thousandth, nudge win is at 500. Let's set nt network trainer dot noise density equal to 0 0.05, okay? So set the noise density to 5%, all right? What else do I want to do? So this will train it, this will save the network, um, so I already have it set up here to save this to character recognition symbols underscore noise because I'm going to train on so the character recognition data set um, child node zero is the math symbol so that's the plus times minus divide uh, symbols um, I'm going to train those and stuff the solution network in here but I'm also going to uh, save the last example of dirty data for viewing. Okay. If I could type the word viewing, that'd be spectacular. So let's create an XML document. Let's call this one, um, I don't know, ndoc for noise equals new XML document like that ndoc.load.xml. This is just to stuff in dummy data. Let me give it a root element like so. And then ndoc.documentElement.append child. And I'm going to add the node that comes out of saving this uh, data point from uh, the noisy data. So this will be nt dot noisy data dot to XML for this document. All right, just like that. And then I'm going to save it. So ndoc dot save to e colon slash temp slash whatever noisy data set dot XML. Just like now. Um, sorry, I realized there was a typo here. Go back to your binary noise trainer. Um, this isn't going to work out when we have this random in here uh, before train data point. In this case, um, we'll create a brand new one of these every time and I'll get the same random sequence. So instead, take out this portion, right? RND equals new random, cut that out and get rid of this. This is supposed to be set, uh, just created here in the constructor. And I need to add a random rnd to this class. Okay, let's just make it private. Uh, just like that. All right, let's save it, run it. Trained, completed. Awesome. Okay, let me pull up the data here. Uh, edit that. All right, so we have some pretty good errors going. It actually took 12,000 iterations, but we converged. All right, that's great. So um, in the next video, I'll pull up some of this data and we'll check it out.